Hi, this is Ken Ninja speaking. In this uh, section, I'm going to talk about uh, the idea energy conversion efficiency. The idea energy conversion efficiency is thinking about, uh, is talking about uh, uh, a fuel, a given fuel, such like uh, hydrogen, methane, or methanol, and ethanol, those kind of fuel. Uh, ideally, from the thermodynamic point of view, how much really uh, the energy conversion efficiency it is, uh, how much will be jet total the chemical energy can convert into electricity. That's the efficiency we are talking about. Uh, since the, in the previous section, uh, we have been talking about uh, from the thermodynamic dynamic principle, you're able to calculate the energy density of a fuel. For instance, hydrogen, methane, those kind of things. How much uh, uh, watt hour per uh, more or per kilogram or per liter uh, the fuel can generate. But uh, that's uh, ideally um, you can produce. Uh, over here, we're going to talk about uh, is uh, how much percentage the conversion efficiency. That's mean you had uh, how much the 100% uh, chemical energy. How much? How many percent you can convert into electricity? As we already know, uh, the fuel cell is an uh, energy conversion de device. It also chemically convert the chemical energy of the fuel into electricity, the, the out there free energy. And also it might release some heat or absorb some heat from the environment. So uh, from this point of view, the, from the energy conservation, the total uh, energy coming in equal to this plus this or the delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. This is the temperature the in Kelvin degree. You can see this is the fuel, the chemical energy the fuel possessed. And this is the heat release or absorb from due to the fuel cell reaction. And this will be total electric, electric energy release, the maximum electricity released from the fuel cell reaction. So, uh, the intrinsic efficiency, uh, based on thermodynamics, the intrinsic e efficiency epsilon i equal to delta g over delta h. Over here, we give a uh, uh, idea, give a, a thought experiment. For instance, uh, if I had a fuel which uh, had 100% the uh, chemical energy. And through the uh, battery discharge, it might be generated, release uh, so much electricity and also so much thermal energy or heat released into the environment. So we can assume a thought experiment have a battery, not only the fuel cell, but the only kind of battery. And then if you connect uh, and, uh, to the external motor fan or a uh, resistance, and the, this is a circulate circuit. And when you um, run the experiment, assume if you had a total, uh, a boundary uh, surrounded, we count how much net energy coming out. We think, uh, we assume it's 100%. You can, uh, this uh, you can see, if you had a battery and then you had a copper wire shorted out, you will see the battery will be a lot of heat generate. Don't try this on the lithium battery. You can try this on the uh, dry cell or the alkaline battery. They'll be much safer. And uh, so the, the, if you, that's mean you give an infinity amount of current through this battery, then the most will be generated heat rather than any, uh, only small amount of electricity. If the, the current infinity, infinity large, then most will be go to the thermal energy. Most will be this. But if you let the current control the current, let a very slow, very small amount of current flow through the external current uh, circuit, then most will be converted into the electricity here. You may think. Uh, from the thermal dynamic point of view, point of view, the current almost nearly zero current flows through the external current circuit, then this uh, maximum amount of uh, work done will be the electricity close to thermal dynamic uh, 80%. So with the same experiment, if you consider at uh, almost the zero current flow through 
external current circuit then the heat released from the battery maybe 20 percent and then through the external current circuit will be 80 percent electricity released out so that's the given um, uh, the idea how uh, thought experiment now we uh, assume uh, we use the same principle we can consider hydrogen and over here is a pure oxygen but uh, and uh, they may generate liquid water or gas phase water so from here uh, if you can find uh, from the literature or the website you can see you can find uh, all the the physical property uh, for different kinds of species their heat of formation and the free energy for each species then based on the previous example, we can calculate the, the heat direction, overall heat direction, that means this direction, or the free energy change of this entire direction. Uh, this one, uh, you can calculate from individual species times the stoichiometric number. For, uh, for hydrogen, this is 1, oxygen 1.5, and the water is 1. So you can substitute those uh, properties into this equation. So the first is a uh, the product the product is the water and uh, this is the heat of uh, formation and the minus the reactant the reactant including the hydrogen over here and then the oxygen over here the substitute into the and this is a stoichiometric number here the one and the one half here can substitute and then that's the calculate the heat of reaction the free energy also the same you can perform you can calculate so the n uh, intrinsic efficiency uh, is equal to delta g this number divided by uh, this number divided by this number so you end with 95 percent this is a uh, calculate based on the the hydrogen uh, is a uh, on the, the the gas phase so you get uh, those number on the gas phase uh, here but how about the, in the liquid phase they certainly had different. So based on the um, the liquid phase, we ended with 83%, and the gas phase, like previous, is 95%. So the energy conversion efficiency, actually based on the product, the reactant, the phase, you had to determine the uh, can determine the efficiency. And the fuel cell usually we comparison the fuel cell efficiency. We usually use a low heating value, uh, uh, since it give up. But in practically, it's better use the high heating value for the comparison. Uh, but um, this is uh, for only from thermodynamic point of view. In reality, uh, the energy conversion efficiency much lower uh, for a given fuel cell. Uh, in practical, for hydrogen air fuel cell or hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, the energy conversion efficiency in practically is about 50%. It's much lower than 83 or 95% because there's another efficiency loss. That means the reaction kinetics, that's the internal resistance over potential and other things. Those will reduce its um, uh, total electricity output and uh, will convert, most will be converted into the heat. And that is a, a related to the kinetic, uh, reaction kinetics part we're going to talk about in the next unit. And uh, for the, if you had a, a hydrogen, if the hydrogen source is not uh, from pure hydrogen, but from the reformate gas, for instance, from the methanol and methane uh, that go through the reformer and they generate the hydrogen rich the gas, uh, including the carbon dioxide, then the fuel cell efficiency is somewhere in about 35%. Uh, that's in a commercial unit called a, uh, CHP, Combined Heat and Power Unit, uh, that um, uses natural gas as a fuel and through the reformer and feed the fuel into the fuel cell. The energy conversion, if you find the uh, natural gas chemical energy into the electricity, is about 35%. So this one, given uh, we talk about the idea energy conversion efficiency. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the Carnot cycle. The Carnot cycle uh, will com uh, actually compare uh, for a heat engine, like internal combustion engine, the energy conversion efficiency versus the fuel cell energy conversion efficiency.